Let's talk about sustainability uh, ethics and the environment and in the polar way. When it comes to environmental issues, we look at it as a holistic way. Let's open this up. <laughs> so, we don't use uh, carbon fiber, which is unrecyclable. It cannot be recycled. We use uh, metals, aluminum. This is recyclable and it recycles forever. So most of the uh, metals humans have created are still recycling and still in use. Where carbon fiber, for example, uh, the composites are unrecyclable. There's no way nobody will pay anything about it. And that's the key. So if somebody is willing to pay for this, the scrap material, then it means that it's been recycled to uh, new products. So we get paid paid for this material here. So I got an engineer here to answer a few questions. So Mika, what's your um, education? So what's your degree? Okay. I'm Master of Science in uh, Chemical, Biochemical and Materials Engineering. So what do you do at Pola? Uh, I'm managing the uh, different processes and, and production. Now we're going to the surface treatment, but there's a lot of these signs, so what does it really mean? Basically, we are using uh, some of the chemicals uh, in, in bats that are corrosive, but those quantities are very low, so basically uh, this room doesn't need this, but when you are adding chemicals, you need to use some protective gear. So this is for legislation reasons. Okay, let's go inside and see what's in. This is, this is always a maze when they, this comes out. So this is still hot. You can warm your whole hands. This is our surface tre treatment li line or facility, how to say it. And um, so Mikla is the professional here, I'm not going to try to explain. So what's going on here? So what are we doing? Simplified, we have the cleaning solution first, uh, then rinsing, uh, preparation for the aluminum surface, passivation, uh, multiple rinsing again, uh, lacquer with colors, and then the last is the oven drying for the lacquer and passivation. In the industry, there's various methods of surface treatment, and mainly it's about the, the looks and to protect the, the, the frame from corrosion or, or whatever reasons. So, so we do it differently so in, in, in Pola. So how does it differ from the other methods being used in the, in the industry? And how, how does Finland as a location make, make a difference? Well, basically, uh, we can use uh, extremely low concentration of chemicals because of the in-house production. And uh, Finland allows us to recycle the chemicals, allow us to use very efficient cleaning of uh, treating the wastewaters and not worry about them. Okay, that sounds good. So, EU is doing a lot of regulate, uh, regulations to the surface treatment facilities at the moment actually you were talking about some uh, chemicals are now being banned so why is that why they're doing so much effort to uh, limit the surface treatment because a lot of people are complaining about the the efficiency and that the, the quality of the paint colors for example cars have declined so so why is that there is quite many toxic chemicals and heavy metals used in these different surface treatments and uh, we can avoid using using any of those basically with this process. So, so you said in-house production. Why is that good? Uh, well, if you are using subcontracting or uh, getting too many different parts and materials, greases, uh, dirt, then we need to have uh, even stronger uh, pre-treatments before the process. Okay. So, so let's see how we have solved that. Okay. So here we are in our machine shop. So these work, machines work automatically, almost. So people load the uh, pieces in. So, so we, you were talking about the good, good size of uh, in-house production. So, so what does it really mean now? So we are here, and how we control the dirt, dirty part. So basically, we are using biodegradable cutting fluid, and the parts come go from here to surface treatment so fast. 
but we can avoid uh, heavy free treatments in, in that line. So we're not using those nasty chemicals to get that old dirty stuff out from the cutting fluid. So for example, uh, if somebody would machine steel here, would that mean that we would use we need to use a different method over there as well? Probably yes. So there's some could be some steel in, in the surface of the aluminum from from the, the dirty machine. So so our, we have a clean process and that allows us to use less chemicals. Am yeah. I right? Yeah. Okay, let's move to the next part. Okay, so let's talk about packaging and there's a lot of feelings uh, that people have for for packaging. So this is our box where we ship ship the frame and the fork is inside. Uh, we use uh, wood as a like supportive uh, structure. So so the BB is held here and the rear axle here. So this is really good that the bike doesn't shift inside the box and it's uh, it's going to be protected by these uh, walls as well for impacts. We see a lot of packages like dropping and all that, but. Uh, for with this package, we haven't seen any any damage for the the product itself. So, so this is made from cardboard and wood. But then then there's a other thing I want to talk about. So so in most packaging, you need some fluff like like padding inside. And uh, generally, people think that this is more environmentally uh, sustainable. So it kind of is because this is recyclable. But what you need to do to make this is the part which makes it less sustainable and environmentally friendly than this. So let me explain. People get so emotional about the plastics. So, so, and and yeah, we we talk about, for example, that carbon fiber can be recycled, and um, and they end up in the landfill. So, what about plastic itself? So this is made of oil and it can be burned and at the moment these clear, clear plastics can be actually recycled if the, the countries where they have been uh, uh, recycled will have that process however um, this is really good to burn as well for energy like heating or energy uh, like uh, electricity so this is a simple process more simple process than making hard and, and shredding and this is actually quite much heavier than this. So this film is really thin, it's filled with air, and all the padding here is mainly done with, uh, with uh, the gaps between the, the uh, solid fibers. And um, so we need less of this than this. So you just need to think about, this needs oil to be produced, the trees have to be cut down the trees have to be uh, transported to the uh, facility where they make pulp. Pulp needs to be formed into uh, paper. Paper needs to be formed into carton. And, and this has to be transported as well. So this is more heavier. It, make, it needs more oil than this to produce. So if we look at the overall impact, this is a better solution for padding inside. So, so I get mixed feelings when, when, uh, when companies uh, state that they use only recyclable materials and this can be recycled as well. Uh, so LDPE will have a number four, it has a number four, uh, inside the triangle. In general, LDPE plastic with a number four can be recycled at many facilities. However, it's always best to check with your local facility to confirm whether or not they accept LDPE plastic for recycling. So, okay, so when I'm talking about burning uh, waste uh, to energy, it's called waste to energy. WTE or waste, uh, so energy to waste or waste to energy uh, processes. So it depends on your community where you live. So either you can recycle it or it's gonna be waste to energy. So anyway, uh, the whole process is, is uh, we think it holistically. So we want to approach it uh, like a holistic matter. So how, how this actually works is that probably people have seen these bubble wraps everywhere, but it's a simple process. It's, it's just filled with air locally here. So we don't get it like in huge packages of this, but it comes in a small roll from sea layer and uh, 
yeah, that's how it works. It's pretty simple, and air is not very heavy, you know. So, yeah. so that's the whole whole thing. So you're shipping the cleanest air in the world, around the world to people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's, a, it's, here it's the cleanest air in the world. So <laughs> to get the piece of Finland while you buy uh, air from here as well. So probably we should um, send water as well because it's one of the cleanest waters in the world as well. Let's talk about how we're not perfect here in, uh, at Bolle. So uh, some things we can't actually uh, affect, which is, for example, uh, that we are in Finland. We are pretty far away from the rest of the world, but we, we produce locally a lot and then we ship uh, around the world. And um, that's where the most... Um, most emissions probably come from because uh, a lot of people uh, will get their bikes from air freight uh, and uh, that's something that uh, there's no way we can uh, we can change you live basically in the middle of the nowhere uh, and um, yeah it's a long way to everywhere else but what we can do in the future we can if we grow the company grows bigger we can make facilities this facility can be copied to for example, the United States or Canada or, or somewhere where our uh, customers are. So, um, so, so we try to improve all the time and, and we don't claim that we're perfect. We're pr pretty assertive what we say because we do a lot of research before we do something. So, but we want to learn constantly and be better at it.